What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I want to talk about the one simple thing that once I understood this at the poker table, I started winning a lot more, and I think this will help some of you guys out as well. So having coached hundreds of students, especially in the small and mid-stakes games, I've gotten to see a lot what holds people back. And I would say that there's one particular strategy situation that really costs a lot of people money at the poker table. What is this? It is not understanding the why of when they decide to make a bet. Specifically, are you betting for value or are you betting as a bluff? And often, if you cannot answer yes definitively for one of these, then often you should not be making the bet in the first place. And I'm going to walk you through an example in today's video, step by step, to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So as I said, most people do not ask themselves this basic question at the poker table when they're deciding to make a bet. And I'm specifically talking about the turn and the river, and that's what we're going to get into today. So let's jump into the hand here. You raise up ace four of hearts from early position and a tag titan aggressive player calls you on the button. So hopefully you guys already understand a little bit about player types and ranges when we raise from various positions at the poker table preflop. So I don't want to get too deep into that. I have a free poker cheat sheet where I discuss all of that in detail in my entire strategy for small stakes poker, which will be the top link in the description below. But basically when a titan aggressive player calls us here on the button and we raise an early position, Position, I expect them to be flatting us with a pretty wide range of very strong hands. Remember, we raised an early position here, so I do expect this player to be flatting us with ace-king from time to time, ace-queen, ace-jack, a lot of bigger aces like this. I do expect them to probably be three-betting us with aces and kings, and I expect them to be flatting us with a wide range of suited connectors, suited aces, just like we have small and mid-pocket pairs, suited one-gappers, broad ways the whole gamut especially if there are some weaker players left to act in the blinds once again if any of this sounds like i'm speaking chinese to you or something right now i would recommend reading my free poker cheat sheet as it explains all of this in much more detail but let's go see the flop so the flop comes down with a jack of diamonds ace of spades and ten of hearts remember we have ace four of hearts so this is not a bad flop for our hand but for a lot of amateurs this is a very deceptive flop for them. A lot of amateurs think that this is a really good flop for our hand when actually when you analyze this player's range, as we're going to do in a second here, this is a sort of good flop, but not like slam dunk amazing. We do have top pair, always awesome, of course. And we also have a backdoor flush draw. Hopefully you guys already saw that. If it comes heart, heart on the turn and river, we would make the nut flush. Now, of course, we raised an early position, so we're going to be acting first here. So what what should we be doing? Well, I think in a spot like this, you should be checking and C-betting. C-bet stands for continuation bet. I think you should be mixing this in around 50-50. I talk about this in my brand new Elite Poker Training University. 17 plus hours of advanced training and dozens of cheat sheets walking you step by step through my entire strategy. And I talk about in detail, specifically in my Elite Poker University training, about how we want to constantly be using various frequencies in common situations like this against better thinking opponents like a tight and aggressive regular opponent like we have in this hand. So roughly 50-50 I'll be checking and c-betting in this spot here but we decide in this particular hand to go ahead and make our c-bet here. Tag player calls us. So guys at this point alarm bells should be going off a little bit in your head here. You know what is a tight and aggressive player going to flat us with in this situation? It's probably not going to be a hand like six five of clubs or something this player clearly connected with this board in some manner obviously king queen flop the nut straight we already talked about how we do expect this player to be flatting us with a bunch of big aces pre-flop all of those have us absolutely crushed on this board there's several other two pair possibilities like a jack 10 for example which certainly makes sense we already talked about how this player will be 
flatting us preflop with a hand like Jack 10 of clubs, a pseudo connector like that. Guys, we really need to understand in this situation that there's a very good chance we're not ahead right now. Again, we don't expect this player to be calling us with seven high here or pocket eights or something like that. This player likely connected with this board. Remember, this is not a fish we're up against. So anyways, let's go see the turn. Turn comes with the nine of clubs. And now we're going to get to the heart of the matter here of why I decided to make this video of asking ourselves the why here on the turn. What should we be doing here on the turn? Well, I think you should be check calling or check folding, depending specifically on the play type and sort of their HUD data. If you play online, you can just use a program like Poker Tracker, and I'll have links for that in the description below. But if you're not using a HUD, just any basic reads that you have on this player, and assuming that they do bet, of course, when we check to them, any history that you have with this player, any basic reads that you have about how aggressive they typically will be in a situation like this will sway my decision. But the big thing here is we're checking. We're not betting because a lot of amateur will make the mistake here of just blindly betting again. And once again, I don't think many of them are asking themselves the basic question of are we betting for value or are we betting as a bluff? And I should have explained before, I think most people know what a bluff is, but value just means there is a strong belief that you have the best hand right now. And let's talk about that right now, about what could possibly be the point of betting in this situation. So let's ask yourself, is it for value, number one? Well, I don't think we can can be betting for value here, guys. I don't think that there is a worse hand that can possibly be calling us in this situation. Remember, we're beat by basically every single ace, okay? So King Queen has us drawing dead. We can't beat Jack 10. We can't beat Jack 9 now. There are also no flush draws on this board. Again, alarm bells should be going off, guys. There's no draws in this situation that this player can legitimately be calling us with. While it is possible this player could be hanging on with a hand like Queen Jack or King Jack, which we are still ahead of. Guys, we're really grasping for straws at this point to find any kind of hands that we can possibly get value with. And you also need to ask yourself, if we bet here again, is Queen Jack even going to call? Probably not. I think any decent player is going to put us directly on an ace at that point because we've applied tremendous pressure throughout the entire hand. So there's almost no no hands that can possibly call us here on the turn if we were to make another bet again. Now let's talk about number two. Are we betting as a bluff here? Well, the only thing you need to ask yourself with a bluff is why do you need to bluff in the first place? Remember guys, we already have top pair here. We don't need to bluff. We don't need to turn our hand into a bluff in this situation because if this player has nothing or some sort of really weak draw or something like a queen jack or something, we don't have to bluff those hands out. We're already ahead of them and we're very likely to still be ahead of those hands on the rivers. So guys, the bottom line here is when you're in a situation like this, when you're considering betting again on the turn or river and you can't definitively say it's for value or it's a bluff, oftentimes it's better just to check in this situation. Guys, always remember, we're going to get that value in on the river anyways. I talk about this in my third book, The Micro Stakes Playbook. I talk all about deception value. That's what I call it when we check on the turn here, we create that impression in our opponent's head here that we don't have anything, that we don't have the top pair with the ace, but of course we do. So we're going to cash in that value on the river anyways. But I hope you guys can understand here that there's literally no point for us to bet here on the turn. It's not for value. We don't need to bluff. So we're better served here to just check, go to the river, let them bluff at it. Because again, we created that decision value by checking here on the turn or just betting out on the river ourselves to get some additional value as well. All right, guys, I hope this one helped. Make sure you like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Also, if you want to know my complete strategy for small and mid stakes games, once again, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. That'll give you my entire strategy to smash these games with every single hand in every situation. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.